Hello and welcome back to season two of Visiting Dog Out, a fan's first sports network production. If you are new, new here, I'm Crystal O'Keefe. I'm a podcaster, a managing editor, and a writer for Southside Sox. And on this show, we preview each White Sox matchup with guests joining to talk about their teams and the 2024 season in general. So today I have Walker Kelly to talk about the Detroit Tigers. Uh, welcome. Please feel free to introduce yourself. So I'm Walker. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, yeah, I've been a Michigan resident and Tigers fan my whole life. Um, just uh, it's it's it hasn't been the you know the brightest of times the last decade or so, but uh, we do have a proud history, and I think we're getting back to that. So you know, we'll there will be some positivity in this preview. Some positivity. I, I will admit we we do a series predictions post in Southside Sox, and a lot of people have the Tigers actually winning the division this year. So there there's some confidence. Yeah, I I'm not sure I'm going to go that far yet. <laughs> That's fair. I put the Guardians, unfortunately. Oh, okay, so what is new in Tigerland? It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Um... The first thing they did in the offseason was uh, grab Mark Canna from the Brewers. That was, I think, a good move. Um, we only gave up Blake Holub, who was a pretty middling prospect. Um, I know Canna's 35 years old, so he's not going to be a, a long-term asset to the team. But uh, his on-base percentage was still above 370 last season. Um, what, the last four years, I believe, he's been top 15 in the majors over that span in OBP. So um, fits Scott Harris's model of he loves his guys who have high on base percentage, good eyes, controlled strike zone. He's always talking about that. So um, definitely fits with the with, with the team. Um, the, they are down to 13 batters as well, the Tigers. So I, I he's certainly going to be on the roster. Um Otherwise, uh, the big free agent signing was probably Kenta Maeda, mm -hmm. um, getting him away from Minnesota. Um, so obviously, in, in division opponent, um, Maeda has had an uneven spring training, but he's looked a lot better his last couple starts. So he will pitch in this series in game two. Um, one of our other free agent acquisitions, Jack Flaherty, is going to pitch game three. Yeah. Um, he's coming off a pretty rough season. But in spring training, his fastball velocity was still good. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Chris Fetter, who's proven to be able to resurrect other careers, I'm hoping um, he, as our pitching coach, can uh, can work some magic with Flaherty as well. Um, signed a couple of relievers, Andrew Chafin, Shelby Miller. Um, Miller had a really good season with the Dodgers last year. Chafin, a former Tiger as well. Um and then picked up Gio Urshela really late, like late February. Um, and he's probably going to start the season as the starting third baseman. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that you guys have Mark Hanna because now I'm a little bit closer to him because I am also, I also unfortunately root for the Mets. So that mm. was a little heartbreaking when he went to Milwaukee, but. I'm happy because I'll be at opening day, so I can see him again. We can be reunited. Um, <laughs> so how would you grade Detroit's offseason? And also, is Jason Bonetti actually the top acquisition that you guys got? That's a fair point. Yeah, as a White Sox <laughs> fan, I know, uh, yeah, I'm sure you miss him. Uh, he, he, we've only gotten to hear him in spring training games so far, but, I mean, if you've heard him on baseball broadcast, basketball broadcast, Jason's a pro. You know, he, he's really a, a great broadcaster, already has a good rapport with Craig Monroe. Um, and yeah, he, he's just he's just a pro's pro. He knows how to keep the conversation moving. He understands the game. Um, I was really happy when we got him because Matt Shepard just was not it. Um, he, he I yeah, I respect Shep, but <laughs> just not a very good play by play announcer. Yeah. So Benetti's a big improvement there. Um, in terms of the overall offseason, I would say you know, like a B. Um, I, I think they did improve the roster, um, certainly in the pitching depth. Um, grabbing two solid starting pitchers and a couple higher-end relievers was 
good to fill out the depth of, of the staff. Um, I would have liked to see them get a little bit more of a, you know, permanent option at either second or third base. I know Keith is going to take one of those spots, probably second base. Um, I would have liked to see somebody at third base who's a little bit more um, of a long-term answer than Urshela or, uh, you know, Andy Ibanez. Not necessarily saying they should have gone after like a Matt Chapman, but I would have liked to see somebody over there who was a little bit higher end because we, not in the field, but we have a black hole at the plate at shortstop. So it, it would have would have been nice to, you know, find a little bit of power in a bat at least. You know, Urshela mm-hmm. can hit for average, but he's going to hit like four home runs all season. Um, yeah, I, I, th- I think that's probably the biggest glaring issue that I had with the offseason. But other than that, I mean, I, I think they did fine. You know, it's – it, the timeline isn't necessarily to compete this year with the weak division. A lot of people think we can, but yeah. um, I, I think overall it was a good, not great off season. That's fair. Um, do you, I mean, do you have anything kind of good in your farm system for someone that can come up this year and take in some of those spots, at least learn from some veterans that are going to be there? Um, Jace Young who is uh, Josh Young for the Rangers, his younger brother. Um, He is a second and third baseman. He is hitting the cover off the ball in the minors right now, but he hasn't hit above double A. So he was never going to be up with the team this year, Mm -hmm. um, at the start of the year at least. But there have been rumblings that midseason, if he keeps hitting like he's been hitting in the minors in triple A, that he could be a midseason or late season call up this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Harris has talked about how he doesn't, that that we've got guys in the organization at every position and he doesn't necessarily want to block those guys. And that's why they've been kind of going with more short term free agent signings. Um, so I, I think you'll see him at some point this year, maybe not before September, but he's an exciting prospect. Um, other than that on the infield. We don't really have anybody. I mean, Adis Leonard is maybe the next best prospect, and he's a good bat, but not really great in the field mm-hmm. and not one of our top prospects. Um, the other main prospect that really has is got people excited is Jackson Job, uh, the, the, the starter. Um, he came out in the ninth inning in his first ever spring training uh outing and he struck out two of the three batters he faced was throwing 101 102 miles an hour um absolute wipeout slider and he finished the game with two straight change-ups too so I wow. mean, he's he looked really impressive again he's never pitched above double a so they're mm-hmm. going to want him to get triple a innings but he looks the part i'll tell you that that's good i hope he doesn't turn into a michael kopech like here on the white Sox, where Looked phenomenal. So excited. He was my ride or die. Like one of those, I would just go to war for that man. And now I'm just like, oh gosh, if he could just not, if he could just not be on the team now, that'd be cool. Cause now is he, he's going to he be, be your closer. Yeah. He's going to be somewhere in there. And I mean, it, it stinks because he can, he was throwing over a hundred in spring training, mm-hmm. but he's, he's very inconsistent with just everything. And there hasn't been anyone to really help him in the organization. And Mm -hmm. at the same time, I don't think he is eager to learn either. So he's just kind of become this kind of mass that we're all like, oh, great. Sounds like uh, Alex Lang for us. (laughs) Yes. Um, So, I mean, you said you, you don't see any like actual contention this year, but do you feel confident like outside of that? Like if you don't feel like there's going to be any postseason action, do you still feel confident about, about this season overall? Yeah. I, I think that the team will, you know, barring major injury, you know, like a season long injury to green or Torkelson, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, I think the team will win more games than they did last year. I believe 77 and 85 last season. So um, I think about a five win improvement is pretty reasonable. I would say somewhere around 500 is I I would assume the goal and to be playing meaningful games in September, not necessarily to be in the playoffs or win a playoff series, anything like that. 
but to be legitimately competitive till the end of the season. That's all you can ask for in this division, really. Mm-hmm. It is it is a horrible dis- division, but it is what it is. All right, we are going to just take a very quick break mm-hmm. to pay some bills. And welcome back. All right, so let's get into this first series of 2024. The White Sox are hosting the Tigers, a guaranteed rate field on Thursday. If you are listening to this, it, it's probably happening right now. Um, so first, let's chat about the pitching matchups. The White Sox pitching is abysmal at best right now. Um, but opening day, it's Garrett Crochet, who has – he came as a starter. He has not started – a major league baseball game in his career um, against Tariq Skubal, who is, who is great, in my opinion. And then Michael Soroka and Kenta Maeda. And then finally, Eric Fetty and Jack Flaherty. So it seems like you guys might have the upper hand in this series pitching-wise, but what can you tell me about this rotation? Uh, I mean, Skubal is the guy who's been here the longest. Um, he's the ace of the staff. He's the top dog. After he came back from injury last year, he was incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, Throws 98, 99 miles an hour, works at the top of the strike zone, very tough to get to his fastball. He's got kind of a cutter slider type pitch that he likes to bust inside on the righties' hands. Um, Change up that he'll throw to both righties and lefties. Um, he's, He's very close to a complete pitcher. I mean, his strikeout rate's really high and his walk rate is really low. And that you you can't really ask for a whole lot more out of a guy who you want to be the leader of your staff. He's he's got the potential if he pitches to his capability to be a top ten starting pitcher in the league this year. Um, the other two guys, the free agent acquisitions, not going to have that ceiling. Uh, mm-hmm. Maeda is not a hard thrower. He'll top out at about ninety two. Um, really good split finger. A lot of the Japanese pitchers will feature a split finger. Um, He has essentially mastered it. He'll throw it just about anywhere in the strike zone. He'll use it as an out pitch. Um, Really likes to mix up his spots, mix up his speeds. That that's how he'll get you out is he is creative. He's unpredictable and he has a a large arsenal, but he's never going to blow you away. And he's not going to be a 12 strikeout per nine inning guy. Certainly not. Um, Flaherty could be if he pitches to his capability from earlier in his career with the Cardinals Mm -hmm. last season was not a good performance from him. Um, after he got traded, it improved a little, but not much. He's, you know, certainly I think you can say coming off the worst season of his career, but the velocity is still there. The movement on his pitches is still there. He's just got to find more consistency. He, He can't let his control get uh, out of whack. He's, you know, that that's going to be the biggest issue. It's not that he doesn't have stuff. It, it's that I think he's lacking confidence mm-hmm. from last season. And if we can give him that confidence back, I think he'll be just fine in the middle of rotation. Yeah. I didn't realize how high his ERA was. He was almost at a five. He was at 4.99 ERA. Mm-hmm. Although at spring training, he's, he's, it's good. It's 295. So yeah, yeah, he's looked definitely better in spring training than he did last season. But again, I I don't know how much you can take that into account based on the lineups he's been facing. Yeah, spring training, I, you never know what's actually going to translate to the field. So it's always mm-hmm. tricky. We always, I always looked forward to Dylan Cease because he'd always look great in spring training. And then he would come out and just be flat, except for, you know, last two seasons when he was phenomenal. But yeah. It's always it's always frustrating to see what happens, um, but yeah, I've I've always liked Jack Flaherty. I think he's 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 got that skill. He just it's a little rough. And Kinta reminds me a lot of Johnny Cueto, mm-hmm. with kind of the changing the speeds, really mixing it up, and you just don't know what you're gonna get, which is always a quality I've enjoyed with pitchers. Yeah, K- Kento will probably have the occasional blow up outing where his stuff's just not really moving and he'll go two innings and give up eight runs. But most of the time, he'll go out and throw 100 pitches and give you six or seven innings of one or two run ball. And, you know, he's pretty much a direct Eduardo Rodriguez replacement, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that too. 
So with this team, is there a player who could really be a big threat to this White Sox team, especially in this first series? Well, I know um, I don't know a lot about crochet being that he hasn't started at all yet. Um, Soroka, I know is uh, vulnerable to the long ball. Uh, I think if you're looking for somebody who could get off to a hot start, I would say uh, the guy who's looked like he's locked in at the plate, um, you know, regardless of stats is Kerry Carpenter. Um, He is, him or green are the best pure hitters on the team. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I think Carpenter could easily get off to a hot start. I mean, last season, I believe in one of the first series, he was wearing a a face mask and hit a walk-off home run. Um, He's, he's been known to get off to fast starts. He's been hitting well in spring training. He never seems like he's panicking up there. Um, Just has a good approach, hits the ball hard, can hit home runs, but he's not focused on hitting home runs. He's, he's just a hitter. And I I think that's going to translate him and green would be the two guys I would be most confident in going into this series. Um, Torkelson has been struggling in the spring, so I he might take a little bit longer to get warmed up. Yeah, that's fair. So with those two being threats, would you also consider those kind of the key to take this series, or do you have other things that the Tigers could really do to a very vulnerable White Sox team to win this series? Yeah, I mean, the White Sox have some guys who can hurt you with the bats still. Um, but the pitching, as you said, is, is pretty low end. I mean, probably one of the worst staffs in baseball. So I think definitely scoring runs is going to be the biggest thing. The Tigers had a bad offense last year. They're looking to get at least into the top 20 in terms Mm -hmm. of runs scored per game. And I think, yeah, big, big, uh, big thing here would, uh, if, if they could average five runs a game in this series, I think you're looking at a series win for the Tigers. So I, I think you need to, you know, make, make sure that they're getting runs early, that they're not allowing the White Sox pitchers to get into a rhythm against them and, and, and to start gaining confidence, you know, jump on them early when they're vulnerable. Yeah. And Garrett crochet, he's great. He's, he throws the ball very hard. He's always been phenomenal in the bullpen. He's off of an injury and there's already talks of, maybe Tommy John soon, who knows, which is just wonderful when we have no pitching. Um, but yeah, Garrett is great. He's the only, <laughs> the only one I really have confidence in, in this season, unfortunately, at least this series. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know a whole lot about Fetty. I know he's been around a little while, but mm-hmm. he's kind of bounced around teams. Um, Soroka, obviously, I have uh, I have some familiarity from his time with the Braves. Not a real hard thrower, good control. Um, but yeah, it, if he's not painting the corners, he's going to get rocked. Yeah, and it, it's it just depends on how pinpoint he is on the day. So, with that kind of opposite, what kind of fears do you have heading into this series? Oh, I could see us giving up like five or six home runs for sure. Uh, I, I I think um, probably my biggest fear is and he, Andrew Vaughn's healthy, right? Yeah, he is. Okay, he's I'm concerned there. Uh, he he can really rip the ball um, for power into the gaps and over the fence, left field, left center. Um, big guy, quick bat. That that's a good player, and he has torn up the Tigers before. Um, now what I will say is I'm sure glad to see Tim Anderson out of the division <laughs> because I mean, I liked him, but not when he's playing us. Yeah. He just destroyed the Tigers constantly. I mean, Jose Abreu. Jose Abreu oh. was usually, well, and Dylan Cease, we called him the Tiger Tamer because he was really phenomenal against the Tigers when he was pitching. We've gotten quite lucky over the last couple of years that the White Sox did bottom out a little bit and kind of <laughs> sold off parts because the parts they sold off were the ones that absolutely tore us apart. Um, Yeah. I I, I think Vaughn is definitely in the lineup, the biggest threat. Um, And then you've guys got uh, flamethrowers in, in the bullpen. So I I think while it's not the most experienced bullpen in the world, I think in those uh, small sample sizes, 
variance favors the underdog. And I think if the White Sox bullpen comes out firing, you know, I, I think the Tigers could strike out a lot in this series. Um, just got to hope that if that happens, that their patience at the plate will allow them to pick up enough base runners to chip off runs here or there. But yeah, my biggest fear would be like averaging 14 strikeouts, 15 strikeouts a game in this series right. and ending up like losing two of the games, like three to two. Which will probably either team, it'll, it'll probably be a low scoring series, no matter what the, like you said, we, you, you mentioned Andrew Vaughn who is healthy and who is great. And also Luis Robert mm -hmm. who can really put the ball in motion, but yeah, that's Juan and Eloy are a little on the fence still. Eloy mm -hmm. never stays healthy. No, I, I Juan, love you. So. I, I love Eloy. Shout out Eloy's uh, bit from a couple years ago where he kept unbuttoning his jersey farther <laughs> all season. That was incredible. I That's one of the, my favorite things an MLB player's ever done. Uh, there's a picture um, that we took during the season. It was the season where he was doing all of that in two of my guy friends matt and dick they were doing this chest out for eloy bit and they just every inning i feel like it just came down even more and i was like okay let's keep our clothes on so you were a little too pasty to be doing this but it was, you, yeah you would never never catch me doing that i can tell you <laughs> that you never catch me doing that i'm way too irish <laughs> no he's he's a blast though like he's he's his namesake of big baby and he's very charming and very fun but he stresses me out every yeah. single time he's in the outfield. Yeah, he um hmm, what would I call him? Unreliable yeah. defender. Sounds sounds right to me. Yeah, it's not that he can't play left field, it's that he's just not consistent. No. And it's usually Robert going back and forth. Um yeah. Andrew, I mean, we've got Andrew Benintendi now who's a little bit more consistent at least in right. Mm -hmm. But before that, it was just Luis Robert playing all three positions for the longest time because yeah i remember when you had uh did you have uh eloy luis and avi garcia in the outfield at the same time i think we did at one point yeah yeah and that's just defensively that's so bad in the corners and I, you know you feel bad for robert having to do all that running that's always kind of been our joke because like well we'll mention anyone and oh can they play right or can they play <laughs> second because those are our constant holes again now we've got Ben attendee who is more consistent but even then you know when he's gone who's going to play right and you know we'll i mean just the most random people like one of our prediction things was like will taylor swift make a game and somebody just responded with can she play right field <laughs> yeah, just... it, it's gonna it's it's not gonna i i he's a good bat, but it's not going to be fun when in game 50, you're throwing Gavin sheets out in the right field and hoping for the best. Yeah. That's Gavin. God, I loved his dad. <laughs> Mixed feelings about him. He can hit that's, he can hit homers. That's about it. Yeah. That's, that's really it. And that's even inconsistent. Those aren't even all the time. Um, you could tell he's a golfer and did not want to play baseball. <laughs> Very obvious watching him play. Um, so moving away from our respective teams, what are your thoughts kind of on the 2024 season at large, like your predictions or just anything that you would like to really talk about for this season? Yeah, I, um, I never want to go with the boring pick of – picking the death star to win the world series. So I think I'm probably going to go with Atlanta to take the national league. Mm -hmm. um, obviously it's, it's not like I'm going out on a limb here to take Atlanta. They're clearly the second best team in the national league, but they have a lot of experience. Um, their pitching is another year more experienced. I do think that, um, and you, you know Reynaldo Lopez well, but I'm not sure that's going to work. I think they might end up having to go back to Bryce Elder as the fifth yeah. starter. Um, Reynaldo looked a lot better out of the bullpen. He did. He, he kept his velocity up a lot more. Um, I, I'm not sure that's going to work out. But by the end of the season, they always seem to have pretty much everything in place. 
And I know that Snit is a good manager. Mm -hmm. I know that they're going to get clutch performances from guys like Acuna, Albies, who have been there before. Um, I, I just, I, I trust them to be cohesive and to tap into that experience to get back. Um, the American League is very wide open. Yeah, uh, there there are probably half a dozen teams that you could say have a realistic chance to make the World Series, and none of them are in the AL Central. Um, no, <laughs> no. Nope. It's uh, yeah. I mean, te Texas is really good again. Mm -hmm. Houston is, of course, still good. They're not what they used to be, but they're still talented. Yeah. Um, I'm not taking Seattle all that seriously because their offseason was a complete nothing burger. Mm -hmm. Um. But then the AL East is stacked. There's four good teams in that division uh, in Boston. But I, I think I'm going to go youth movement in the AL, and I'm going to take the Orioles. I really like uh, their their young players. I think that they're going to get some contributions out of guys like Heston Kierstad this year. Um, Adley is one of my favorites. I've loved him since college. Um, just a fantastic fundamental player. Yeah. And Gunnar Henderson could be a legitimate like fringe MVP candidate. He mm -hmm. is it's silly how talented that guy is. So mm -hmm. they they've got I mean and they've got hitters all up and down the lineup. I mean um Santander, Mountcastle can really rake. Um they're they're very dangerous and I think that they're just going to get better and gain confidence over the season. I just I can't trust the Yankees' health, yeah, and their pitching. Um, the Rays never get it done in the postseason because they don't have enough high end talent. They have great depth, but they don't have other than a Rosa Reina, They don't have those star players. Mm -hmm. And then Toronto again. I've never seen them get it done. This this young group of players. I haven't seen them. I think they'll probably make the playoffs this year, but I I can't pick them to go to the World Series right now. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I need to see it to believe it. Essentially, I I like uh, I like Baltimore and and Atlanta, and I think I'll go with Atlanta to win the World Series this year. I like I say, I, I, the Dodgers are obviously going to be the favorite, and for good mm -hmm. reason. But I think year one with all these new acquisitions, I'm not sure it's going to gel well enough to get them to the World Series this season now with this core i'm sure they're going to win one yeah but i don't think it's going to be this year yeah and i mean you've got kershaw who is who's aging they brought him back and i hate saying aging because i think he's like around my age but um yeah and then we've got the shohei drama right now who knows where that's going to land right, right um let's see how old is clayton kershaw oh, uh, oh he's younger mm -hmm. than i am okay that's fine don't feel sick to my stomach or anything. Um, but yeah, I yeah I agree with that point. And they, I mean, they buy all this talent. They're kind of the the Mets of the West, where they've got the money to buy the talent, but the team just never fully clicks. And yeah, and I mean that you can see that they've got the big hole at shortstop right now. I mean, we it's it's pretty apparent that Gavin Lux does not have the arm to play shortstop, mm -hmm. and. I don't think Mookie Betts playing shortstop is a long-term solution. I think that's just the best Band-Aid they've got. Um, spend all that money and you can't find a shortstop. It's unbelievable to me that that they couldn't go, go out and get anyone that could play shortstop. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah, I think I picked, it, I picked Atlanta. I know that. I don't remember who I picked. I think I might have picked the Rangers mm -hmm. just because I, after seeing what they did last season, I... They're very impressive, and they're they're young too. Their lineup is, you know, they they lose very little from their lineup, and a lot of those guys are going to get even better. Yeah, well, I mean, I, we saw a total rise from the Diamondbacks last season that I don't know that anybody would have expected at the beginning of last year. Okay, there there's a good question. Who's your Diamondbacks this year? Somebody who comes out of nowhere okay. and makes the playoffs. That's a good one. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe honestly, now that the Marlins are a little stacked, I feel like they could actually make a push this year. Yeah. I mean, uh, they've got two of my favorite players there now. And I have watched a little bit of their spring training and they look they look competent. They look good. So I think maybe they could 
make an unexpected push. I think somebody unexpected is going to win the NL Central. Um, I was going to go with Cincinnati, but they have so many injuries already yeah. that I, I think I, I have to pass on them. So I think if they were going to do it last year was going to be their year. Yeah. I, th- this Cincinnati core, I think will make the playoffs a couple times, certainly. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're just so beat up already. It's going to be tough for them to not dig themselves into a hole. Um, I'm going to go with the Cubs. I, I think the Cubs are are going to put it together enough mm-hmm. to get to the playoffs, and I'll say I'll, I'll even say the Cubs win a playoff series. That'll be my bold prediction. That is bold, um, but I'm, yeah, I mean, I can see it. I unfortunately have to watch them quite a bit too. Yeah. So yeah, I could see that one happening. Um, and they they had a pretty decent off season, and they brought Cody Bellinger back, which is always good. I like. Uh, Chris Morrell. Yeah. I, I think he's going to have a big breakout season. I could see 35 home runs. And I think they're also, they're not quite reaching the end for Kyle Hendricks and he's still phenomenal. Like he's mm-hmm. been on that team. I mean, he was there for the world series. He was, he's been there forever. Well, and, and Steele was what second in the Cy Young voting last year. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got a really good top of the line of their pitching staff. Yeah, they do. I, they could probably could make it, unfortunately. It'll send one over. Send one over to the White Sox. Am I right? We, I mean, we did get, and I loved Quintana. So I, I mean, I was still mm-hmm. a little sad about that. But we, we did get Eloy and Dylan Cease from the Cubs, and every single time Eloy does anything, it's always like on Twitter, "Thanks Cubs!" Every <laughs> single time. Yeah, because Quintana hasn't done a whole lot since yeah. he left Chicago, unfortunately. It's a bummer because I I really liked him for the longest time, but he was, a hell, he was a hell of a pitcher for you guys. Yeah, so is Chris Hill. That's true. I think it's time to admit that they lost that trade because Chris Dale still, despite being so injured, mm-hmm. is still very good. Yes, and has a ring. And all we really have to show for it is Yohan Moncada when healthy. Yeah, and Moncada is a solid player, but he's, what, a two-and-a-half, three-war player? So, yeah. and then Kovac you know, is the other one that came with it. Right, so you've got, you know, you're, you've ended up with, it's obviously not like, you know, the Cabrera trade or anything, but, you know, the prospects that you ended up with, it, it, it does mirror a little bit with, like, what we had with Mabin and Miller. Um sending those guys off to Miami and then Miller can't start Mm -hmm. turns out to be a good reliever and Mabin is like above average, but just never becomes the star that people thought he could be. Yeah, that's fair. Well, do you have any other thoughts on this 24 season before we wrap things up? Uh, I'll just say, uh, I, I think the, the goal for the Tigers should be to be over 500 and I do think they accomplished that goal, if not, you know, if only barely. I, I think my final record prediction for the Tigers will be 82 and 80. Better than last year. Well, please take great care of Jason Benetti because we will. <laughs> we are all very sad over here. I have a feeling at opening day, I don't think they'll really do anything to recognize him because the whole thing is a Jerry Reinsdorf issue. Um, but I have a feeling everyone will acknowledge him in the audience at least. Yeah, he, he's going to get a warm reception, I'm sure. He's very well liked. Yeah, my he's lovable. Like my son looks up to him and now is going to go into broadcasting. Like he, he starts high school in the fall and that's um, an elective he can take as principles of broadcasting because he just loves Jason Benetti so much. So it's that's awesome. really... I- I've done I've done a lot of sports broadcasting stuff too, and it's it's a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, and he's a special breed, so take good care of him. Cool. Um, so yeah, before we leave, please just let people know where we can find you if you wish. Uh, yeah, so I'm at uh, Big Daddy Drix, very silly Twitter handle, <laughs> um, but I am on there if you want to uh, see some sports tweets and then. Uh, 
I, I I do share my opinions on there, so I can understand if that's not your not your bag. I get that. Um, I also do a fantasy football podcast uh, called the Football Absurdity Podcast with Jeff Crisco and Mike Valverde. That is once a week right now during the off season. So check that out. Uh, Patreon.com slash Fball Absurdity. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Best of luck this season. I know we face the Tigers nine million times. <laughs> sure. um, We're so going to get tired of each other by June. We'll, we'll see. I'm sure I'll be up there too for one of those. Cause like you said, Detroit's just a quick hop on the road. Um, and I, I, I love Detroit. I think your ballpark is really fun. Detroit's a fantastic city. I unfortunately have not visited Chicago yet, but I am very excited to do so. My girlfriend and I have been planning. Well, that's good. Let me know if you need recommendations. All right. Well, again, thank you so much. Enjoy 2024. Hopefully your your tigers come out where you where you want them at least to be. <laughs> yeah, we'll hope so. Thank you for having me on. Really appreciate it. Goodbye. See ya.